Good afternoon and welcome to all the participants. Today we have the immense pleasure of having Dr. Alok Kumar Pandey with us. Sir is Professor, Department of Veterinary and Animal Husbandry, Extension Education, RVC, BAU, Ranji. Uh, sir has chosen a topic of deliberation as entrepreneurship in livestock-based farming. Sir, you are audible as well as visible and your presentation is also visible. Please start, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think uh, I'm audible to you. And so uh, basically, uh, we are uh, now the changing era. Lot of development has taken place, and particularly in the field of livestock farming, we have. Uh, seen that uh, uh, this livestock farming has uh, just uh, transformed itself from the unorganized sector to the broad-based organized industry. There is a steady growth in demand for livestock product, both in domestic and international market. When you see livestock industry is becoming export hub and a ready income generator for Indian economy. So when we see the recent data, you just uh, see the just uh, contribution from livestock sector and the export is around uh, more than 27,000 crore rupees. The livestock enterprise has a cardinal role player in doubling farmers' income. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor has uh, rightly say that this, uh, uh, along with the crop husbandry, this livestock enterprise has to do much for doubling farmers' income. So in doubling farmers' income, this livestock role has been uh, identified at the uh, national level. This livestock sector uh, brings optimistic opportunity for the entrepreneurship development in rural occupation. So entrepreneurship, uh, now this is a very important thing that uh, uh, only doing the farming is not going to help. You have to come with the uh, potential, develop the entrepreneurship potential and to meet the uh, growing demand. As, uh, just uh, you see the FO study has uh, also indicated that uh, Investment of one rupee in livestock sector can generate a return of four rupees. So income from livestock sector is uh, uh, four times. So there is uh, attitude change, shifting of attitudinal orientation to maximize the uh, profit. So livestock farmer versus livestock entrepreneurs. So livestock farmers, we see they are like livestock farmers since time immemorial but the livestock farmers when we talk they are just keeping the animals mainly for the self-consumption and if there is some additional uh, or some surplus is there it is being uh, marketed but livestock entrepreneurs their main person is the marketing of the produce so the purpose of farming for the livestock farmer in general is for consumption purpose, whereas for livestock entrepreneurs, it is for making money by marketing the produce. So scale of farming, this generally the livestock farmers do it, you know, small scale. And uh, livestock entrepreneurs usually they do it on a large scale. However, there are farmers, uh, livestock farmers who are doing the small scale, but they are becoming livestock entrepreneurs on the small scale itself. They are uh, utilizing more of innovations and innovative ideas in their business. So market linkage for the livestock farmer is generally very poor. And the livestock entrepreneurs, uh, the market linkage is very good. Risk taking Willingness, risk taking willingness is uh, uh, for the livestock farmers. They are really low risk takers. 
Where are the livestock entrepreneurs? They are moderate risk takers. Creativity and innovativeness. For the livestock farmers, the creativity and innovativeness is low. For livestock entrepreneurs, it is high. Leadership quality, not too much inherent in the livestock farmers, whereas leadership quality is high in livestock entrepreneurs. And uh, uh, the communication network is generally for the livestock farmers, it is weak. And for livestock entrepreneurs, uh, there is a strong communication linkage, communication network is fine. They utilize all sort of the communication for reaching out the people and getting the information as such. Some of the important entrepreneurial traits for the livestock farmers, usually they are market oriented. This is the one important thing which is uh, there with the uh, livestock uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, they must be up market oriented and uh, they are, must be determined. And usually the entrepreneurs, they are determined. I have to do it. This is the thing which is there. So high determination, dedication, and discipline is the core for the entrepreneur. The creative leader, they are the leaders. They are the, take the calculated risk. Uh, so their risk-taking willingness is very high. So this is very important trait. And the passionate about growing his business. So they are really passionate for growing the business. So they are doing the business, they are taking the loans, they are taking the advantage of all the markets, segments, and uh, just to uh, develop them, their produce. They are the opportunity finders. This is the one important thing which is uh, important trait of entrepreneurs. Uh, they are innovators. This is the one important trait which is should be there and which must be there. There are the farmers, they are the large farmers also, but they cannot be called as entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurs are those who use some innovative ideas in their farm and some produce their produce, which is there, must be, but have some innovative then. Then they are versatile. So versatility is the one important trait, which is must be there with the livestock entrepreneurs resilient, focused, business is smart, and as I mentioned earlier also, they must be a good communicator. So communication is very important, and beside that, there must be achievement motivation. So achievement motivation is very important, I have to achieve it. So they are determined, they are uh, versatile, they are innovators. So entrepreneurs traits, this some important traits we have discussed, so step to become a successful entrepreneur. One a general person can become a successful entrepreneur. Yes. How? So first, the thing we have to ensure the financial stability. Ensure the financial stability before going for a business or becoming an entrepreneur. So if you are going to be an entrepreneur, you have to be financially sound. So there are a lot of now the agencies, government agencies also, they are providing things to make the entrepreneurs self-sufficient for doing their business. So build a diverse skill set. This is different types of skills are required. You have the uh, just, uh, technical skill, which is very much important. You must have the technical skill. Also, you have the skill of Communication, that is a very important communication skill. And marketing skill, you must have the marketing skill. So these different types of skill sets are required to become an entrepreneur. And consume content across multiple channels. So across the multiple channels, you consume the contents. Identify a problem to solve. You have to identify the problem and one by one, you have to solve the problem. So solving the problem is a core for the to become a successful entrepreneur. Network like a crazy. So networking is very important and 
in this you have to be a crazy lead by example so this is one thing which we will discuss some uh, important uh, uh, success stories so they are the persons they are the persons who uh, they are taken as a example in the society now step to start livestock business usually when you are going for a business of course you have to identify your goal you have to know the goal your goal may be uh, just uh, uh, making the breeding purpose maybe for the production purpose or anything so determine the goal that is the reason. then where you have to do it find the location then the feeding all components of feeding that is the very important thing for the success in livestock business and livestock equipment then for the livestock business it must be registered so register your business market your products make a livestock farming business plan then capital and investment start the business so some important ventures in livestock farming of course we know all here sitting as uh, that we have to uh, like dairy enterprise sheep enterprise goat enterprise wilder enterprise layer enterprise pig enterprise so different uh, enterprises can be there dairy enterprise of course is the the most important entrepreneurial activity have taken place in uh, dairy farming so dairy uh, for the, just uh, to mention some important uh, economic point of view so we will just uh, discuss one by one about dairy enterprise so important source of subsidy income is small and marginal farmers and ethical labels the manure which we get from the dairy sir produce organic fertilizer this organic fertilizer is very very important for the growth of the product particularly now the, we are uh, discussing about the organic farming in this organic farming it is a dairy sector which have to play a major role so uh, uh, you get the organic fertilizer gobar gas as a fuel domestic purposes you uh, get the gobar gas uh, uh, can also be utilized for running the engines for drawing the water from well so can full utilization of surplus fodder and agricultural by products are um, there in, in this enterprise we can utilize our surplus fodder and agricultural by products the bullock they act as a got power for farm operation and transportation so employment in dairy enterprise we got throughout the year employment the major source for livelihood in rural areas so this dairy enterprise uh, by just uh, uh, we will see the economics of this only 10 cross breeding cows so by just 10 cross breeding cows so this we have given uh, the uh, Project cost uh, of ten uh, uh, cross breed cow, this cow shed, calf pen, uh, and then the transportation cost, chaff cutter, dairy appliances. So these things, right? So initial investment is seven lakh forty five thousand rupees only, and the recurring uh, expenditure uh, is uh, uh, so both uh, the. Uh, insurance and fodder cultivation, medicine, vaccines. The total recurring expenditure is uh, uh, fifty-five thousand. Total project cost is eight uh, lakh uh, rupees only. So margin money can just have twenty-five percent of the project cost. Rest you can have from the uh, bank loan. So uh, two lakh you have your own investment. Six lakh you can get from the Uh, bank, then cash flow analysis, so feeding during lactation period, uh, right? Early lactation, so feed cost as one lakh eighty thousand to one lakh ninety thousand, feeding during the dry period, so around fifteen twenty thousand to fifty uh, thousand, medicine, vaccines, and veterinary aids, insurance 
cost is there, cost of fodder cultivation, cost of labor. So this all uh, cost uh, in first year it will come to three lakh uh, fifty thousand, three lakh forty five thousand. Then in second year three lakh eighty seven thousand. In third year three lakh eighty thousand. So uh, this uh, investment is uh, around three lakh eighty thousand. So income, uh, uh, income from sale of milk, sale of honey bag, man work, which will be utilized in own farm. Otherwise, if imputed value of this man work is taken, uh, of course, the uh, return will be more. So this uh, total income uh, is around uh, 10 lakh rupees on an average. So you have investing around 5 lakh rupees or uh, and getting 10 lakh rupees from this business. Then goat enterprise, this uh, goat farming particularly do not need expensive building to house them. They require less labor than other kinds of livestock. Foundation stock relatively cheap and rapid multiplying. Economical converter of grass into meat. The excellent weed destroyer. So mutton, yeah, uh, the, they are free from produced by any community, so there is no religious bias or taboo against eating the uh, goat meat mutton. So economics of goat farming, so 50 dues and 2 bucks when we take, so cost of dough, cost of work and all things, concentrate feed, uh, require, so This uh, project cost, bank loan, capital cost is 5,45,000 fully for then the total expenditure uh, which is coming is around 53,000 rupees uh, every year and the income is around 3 lakh rupees uh, per year and when you are Finally, uh, selling all your animals, it gives you around 7 lakh rupees. So, uh, the return from this enterprise is uh, by only 50 goats is uh, around uh, 2 lakh, uh, 37 lakh rupees every year. And in last, we can get 6 lakh rupees from this business. Then poultry enterprise, this again, they require less investment, gives rapid return on investment. Very small generation interval, you know, continuous source of income. Can be reared even in the backward of backyard of the homes. So poultry dropping, they also act as a valuable fertilizer, offers good full-time or part-time employment opportunity. Products have high nutritional value. So this layer farming, 1000 layer uh, in depleter system. So if we see the, the cost which is incurring, it is uh, around total expenditure 8 lakh rupees and the cost return is 16 lakh rupees. The so total return net profit is 7 lakh 60,000 rupees. So by just this one uh, thousand uh, Parts you can have the income of seven lakh sixty three thousand rupees per year. Then boiler farming one thousand boiler per cycle. We have second and uh, six cycles we can take in uh, one year on the depleter system. Again, this business the total cost is uh, uh, forty one thousand rupees. The cost. 3,65,000 rupees. So personal uh, cost comes to around 7 lakh rupees. The income is the uh, uh, cost of production <coughs> is uh, per boiler. Uh, we can uh, get the income of 1 lakh 
120 rupees, 22 rupees. So net profit from this uh, only around 1,000 rider is uh, 1 lakh rupees per year. So big enterprise, this is uh, again a very growing enterprise, particularly uh, in our state, this big enterprise is uh, going very important. So this big enterprise, they serve as effective instrument of social change, particularly for the weaker section of the rural community. Pigs are probably the most accommodative animal among all livestock. So they are easy to uh, be reared. The pig can be sold off at different stage of growth, requires minimum capital investment and labor. Return over the investment is quick and very high. Within a very short period, pigs achieve marketable maturity. So pig farming, we have just calculated 10 sows, one boar economics. The overall uh, overhead cost comes around uh, 4,615 rupees. The expenditure, which is uh, uh, total expenditure uh, in, for 10 pig unit is uh, uh, 5 lakh rupees. And uh, the income uh, is, uh, gross return is uh, uh, around 4 lakh rupees. So net profit per pig per year is uh, around 37,000 and per, per month, when we calculate net profit per pig per month, it is around 3,000 rupees. So coming down to some important, the government is giving a lot of uh, emphasis on for the entrepreneur, entrepreneur's development and uh, entrepreneurship development program. We have uh, different components, particularly when we see the National Livestock Mission, which was started in 2014-15. So a very important program under which the uh, entrepreneurs have given more uh, priority. And this, uh, uh, the main objective of this uh, National Livestock Mission is sustainable development of livestock structure. And the subsidiary channeling agency is NABAD. Under this, we have different submissions, Poultry uh, Venture Capital Fund, then uh, Integrated Development, a small ruminant and uh, rabbit, then Pig Development. So Poultry Venture Capital Fund, uh, this, the beneficiaries are educated, unemployed youth, and the small farmers with uh, uh, some margin money. Uh, ventures, uh, we can take under this uh, layer farming, boiler farming, when the meat, feed mixing unit, retail outlet, disease investigating laboratories, uh, processing unit, etc. Then subsidy for PPL and SCST, the subsidy is 33.33%. Or APL, the subsidy is 25%. Then scheme for integrated development of small luminant and rabbits to encourage sheep, goat, rabbit, um, this uh, commercial raising rather than the subsistence farming by providing incentive for the performance. So rearing of sheep and goat, 40 unit plus 2 unit, 20% of the total outlet with maximum of 25,000 subsidy for general and 33.33% of the outlet with maximum of 33,300 for SC and ST. Sheep and goat breeding unit can take uh, bigger farms uh, for the entrepreneurs, 500 plus 25 unit. So in this, uh, uh, the subsidy for general is uh, 6.25 lakh and for SCST category, it is 8.33 lakh. Then another program is peak development under this National Livestock Mission. As uh, objective is to encourage the pig rearers to go into the commercial rearing rather than subsistence farming by providing incentive for performance. So rearing of pig, three sow, one boar, a small unit can be taken, or the pig breeding farm with uh, 20 sow and four boars can be taken. Here in all 
NLM, uh, this uh, 25 percent is given for the generals, and 33.33 percent of the total outlay is given for the uh, SCNST. So, pig breeding farm, 22 sows and four boars. Uh, total two lakh uh, subsidy can be given for the general, and for the SCST, 2.66 lakh subsidy can be given. Some important daily development programs uh, for the uh, development of the entrepreneurs, daily venture capital fund, the provision of financial assistance as a loan to the uh, rural urban beneficiaries and a thematic proposal uh, through bankable project. So this is again implemented through NAVAD, the pattern of as assistance, 10% own contribution, the entrepreneurial contribution, is 10 percent then interest fee loan from revolving fund provided by the government of india this is a 50 percent um, interest fee loan is given and the bank loan at in interest applicable for the agriculture activities uh, 40 percent so under this dairy entrepreneurship development scheme was started in uh, 2009 and implemented by NAVAR. The objectives are to provide the boost to the dairy sector by providing capital subsidy for purchase of farm animals, milking machine, and other dairy related activities. The beneficiaries can be individual entrepreneurs, self help group, dairy cooperative societies, even the milk unions. The capital subsidy of 25% is given for the general categories and 33.33. For the SCST categories. Pattern of assistance, entrepreneur's contribution is 10% uh, of the total project cost for loans over uh, rupees 1 lakh and bank loan, so rest portion of the uh, project cost given as a bank loan. Then central sector scheme for agri clinics and agri business centers. This is uh, particularly for the agriculture graduates, and uh, this is uh, run by this uh, manage so to support the agriculture development, so support the efforts of public extension, and to create gainful self employment opportunities to unemployed agriculture graduates, cultural diploma holders, immediate uh, intermediate in agriculture or science graduate with PG in agri related subjects. So this under this uh, uh, facilities are being given by the government of India, and uh, we so this uh, Department of Agriculture Cooperative uh, Government of India is give to NABARD, and the NABARD gives ultimately to the banks, which gives the uh, loan and uh, subsidy to the uh, entrepreneurs. The, Entrepreneurs in agriculture sectors, particularly, uh, they are known as agripreneurs. So this uh, uh, identify unemployed graduates or source the extension activities, monetary and feedback. So this is uh, uh, this agri clinics and agri business center mainly it is for the agriculture graduates, veterinary graduates, and one of our students uh, a took a training in agri clinics and agri business center and uh, it took loan the individual project loan can be up to 20 lakh rupees the group projects uh, uh, work can take one crore of loan and uh, additional limit of rupees 5 lakh subsidy is also provided for extremely successful ventures so margin money is uh, 10 to 15 percent the bank loan the type of loan is a composite loan, that means fixed cost plus cost per one operative cycle. Then capital investment, at least 10% of the project cost. A security, hypothecation of the assets, mortgage of land or third party guarantee, collateral security, weighed up up to 5 lakh rupees. The repayment period is 5 to 10 years, uh, depending upon the project. Gestation period maximum two years as per the nature of the project. So rate of interest uh, as determined by, determined by the bank. So 
composite uh, subsidy is given and uh, those project activities different project activities can be uh, taken under this uh, uh, mainly this uh, project uh, which provides the ultimate services to the farmers this is the basis of this uh, agri clinic and agri business and uh, under this what uh, our students, uh, Dr. Bablu Sundia in Jharkhand, uh, he got uh, the assistance from this, and he started the mobile agrovet clinic. So mobile agrovet clinic, they are serving two lakh farmers, uh, provided job to around one fifty persons. Annual turnover is uh, only two point five lakh. So basically, his service oriented, and he has been acclaimed uh, by the. Uh, manage itself and the manage has honored him for doing his selfless service to the uh, so this uh, one entrepreneur we can say it, uh, uh, not going for any uh, service not going in the government service he started his own aggravate clinic and started giving the consultancy then another important program which started by under RKBY. So this RKBY Raftar, Raftar means remunerated approaches for the agriculture and allied sectors rejuvenation. So this is the initiative of Ministry of Agriculture and Farm Welfare, Government of India to give trust to the agri-entrepreneurship and startups. The objective is making farming a remunerative economic activity through extending the farmer's effort risk mitigation and promoting the innovations. So under this uh, <coughs> RKBY Riftar, at IVRI, we have the IVRI Animal Science Incubator Center. It was started in uh, 2019 uh, for development of startups. The program under RKBY Riftar Agri Business Incubation System. We have two programs. One is Navodaya and another is Samriti. Samudhya is for agripreneurship for orientation program and Samriddhi is agripreneurship incubation program. The objective is to achieve the lab to land promotion of uh, new technology through uh, culture of agri startups to promote innovation, entrepreneurship and business creation in agriculture and allied sector by skill development, capacity building and technology scale up to facilitate agri startup ecosystem by support, including the technical, legal, financial, intellectual property, and regulatory compliance related services to the agripreneurs. To build a vibrant agri startup ecosystem through a network between academia and financial institutions, industries, etc. This IVRI have started it recently and Activities of the center are organization of two month training come interesting up internship program with, uh, uh, with the institutions industries for the potential veterinarians uh, the agri startups recipients while working on their idea with a stipend of rupees 10,000 per month. So training areas uh, peak farming, uh, meat quality meat production, processing and value addition frozen cement production, dairy farming, milk processing, etc. So benefit to the trainees up to 5 lakh early pre-seed stage funding in agri orientation program is done and up to 25 lakh funding under uh, potential uh, startups having the minimum viable product uh, based on the innovation solutions, process or the products, services and business models in livestock and animal sciences. Uh, in agribusiness program with 85% of the grant. Support in getting the companies registered, the facilitation in getting their patents registered, licenses at competitive price range. So some we will discuss some important success stories of entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurship nowadays, this is uh, uh, very important thing and uh, people, educated people, they are entering into the 
uh, this uh, livestock farming business and uh, just to see one livestock entrepreneur in uh, China, he manages around 22,000, uh, lakh um, acres of land with uh, around 1 lakh acres of cows. Another our example, this uh, uh, person from Odisha, Sri Kumar Mishra, she is the managing director and CEO of the Milk Mantra. This is a startup, this is an entrepreneur who started the business. The Odisha based startup dairy farm started six years ago and has a strong presence in Eastern India. And the company boasts of one processing unit in Konark in Odisha and an extended processing unit near Mumbai. So the milk mantra last month it is targeting turnover is 150 crore, 150 crore rupees. This the company recently launched turmeric flavor milk shake under the brand name Mushek. This Mushek is getting importance particularly in the Mumbai area and the other metro companies, metro cities. They are also planning to introduce the product in other cities over the next few months. It is on the lookout for exporting Mushek to the US and UK and Japan in near future. Another important is uh, entrepreneur from Andhra Pradesh, uh, this Devendra Shah, the founder of uh, Parag Milk Foods. This was founded in 1992. Parag is one of the India's largest private dairy product manufacturers and is located in the milk bed at Mancha, Maharashtra and Parmaner, Andhra Pradesh in India. The company also has its own dairy farm called Bhagya Lakshmi, where it sourced 3,000 specially bred Holstein Frisian cows and equipped with one of India's first rotatory parlors which has mechanized the whole milking process and in turn ensured high quality and hygiene. Under the brand name Govardhan, it offers traditional products like ghee, dahi, paneer, etc. And not only in uh, southern states, now in all parts of the country, this is becoming a uh, brand name, very important. And uh, so this... Uh, Another important uh, farm uh, by the Alek Agrawal, they, they, he started the Cowboys Desis. The Cowboys is the retail arm of Trunks and Roots, company dedicated to the dairy activities and allied agriculture. The company provides pure untouched cow milk along with many other organic products. The founded by only 28-year-old Alek Agrawal who got is inspiration to start the brand after witnessing manipulation and malpractices of food products in the market. <coughs> so the cow wise delivers milk to the consumer's step and provides the hygienic milk to the farmer. The company has an integrated and interdependent farm where they control all the factors from cow feed, fodder, balanced nutrition, hygiene, medical treatment, milking and packing at one place. They started with just one offering, cow milk, and today have a range of 10 products, including the cow ghee, among other offerings. Coming down to the integrated farming system, all our uh, program is based on integrated farming system. So livestock is the best for the integrated farming system. And one man is a Raj Kishor Sina. So he started in Nalanda, Bihar. So he's a graduate in fisheries, has developed a unique model of integrated farming system in his 8.5 acres of farm. Mr. Sina designed the farm and segregated the land as per the crop requirement. The layout of integrated farming system is that area under the field crop is 1.5 acres, banana in 5 acres, 
mango, guava, papaya, pomegranates in 0.2 acres. Here in the poly house and fish pond in one acre. Dairy, 25 cows and 28 calves. And he has also taken the hundred birds, packet poultry, 20 ducks, along with apiculture, 50 boxes. So this whole thing has been integrated and this gentleman is uh, doing a lot of uh, other activities which is required the best practices of farming like drip irrigation, drip and sprinkler irrigation, plastic mulching, uh, the reducing the chemical fertilizer by using the vermi compost, plant residue, vermi wash, cow urine, bioglass slurry application, azola culture, biopesticide, etc. Mr. Sina says some of the best practices have led to success to make this model sustainable. That is recycling of resources, namely use of crop residue in vermicompost and micro irrigation in the field and horticulture crops. Adoption of all modern technology, immunization of animals, birds, appropriate time and use of biopesticides at fixed interval of crop period. The production of azola per paddy crop, cropping system and feed of dairy, fish and duck, etc. So from the 8.5 acres of land, you can earn an annual debt profit of rupees 15 lakh. So another very important uh, uh, entrepreneur from Jharkhand, this uh, four friends, they started uh, the dairy business. Uh, so they started the business in 2012, uh, just started uh, the dairy farm. Uh, they purchased one acre of land at Varmaji, which is near Rachi, around 30 kilometers from Rachi. And for this 20 lakh, uh, invested 20 lakh. And again, additional 30 lakh was uh, spent on dairy farm. They founded HR Food Processing Private Limited with unregistered brand uh, named Raya and, uh, on April uh, 2012. The initial sales were 300 liters, which jumped to 1,000 in just six months. And after that, in next year, itself, they started their own processing plant in uh, 2013 and the name is the Awesome Dairy. So within five years, their dairy business has milked out a turnover of rupees 100 crore, becoming one of the most popular brands of the state. So this uh, another, another start, startup, another entrepreneur who is looking to rule the India's cow economy with dung soap and urine toothpaste. This 34-year-old Sony launched the cow party predecessor Biolis in 2012 with his own savings of 10 lakh. At that time, cow party was a Biolis brand and focused on selling cow dung-based soaps. A graduate in microbiology, Sony had an earlier dab in the export of toiletries and cosmetic products before launching his own venture. He also patented the cow dung soap. Today, his company sells 45,000 units of soap, and uh, its uh, soap uh, ranges from 35 rupees to uh, 75 rupees every month across India and in uh, another 13 countries, including the US. It also sells over 5,000 units of toothpaste every month. So, this toothpaste, they are uh, rupees 75 for 100 grams. And this cow party product include face wash, uh, door cleaner, hair oil. This is a uh, good startup. And so this uh, uh, in poultry sector, two brothers from Coimbatore, they become India's biggest poultry entrepreneur. Saguna Food is a joint venture between two brothers. Uh, Sunandar Rajan, younger uh, by two years, is managing director, looks up the day-to-day -day operations. And 
Sundaranjan Ra, Rajan is uh, the chairperson. Uh, Sundara Rajan started looking after his family farms uh, at uh, around uh, when he was only 17 years old at early 1980s uh, when he was struggling in Hyderabad. Commercial farming of chicken started emerging lucrative business source of revenue for the Indian farmers. So B.B. Rao, founder of the uh, Venkis um, group, uh, the patent company of Venkis Chicken, had set up the first boiler farm in India in the 1970s. Farmyard chicken made way for boilers and chicken raised in states, made a high protein diet, vaccinated against infections and sold in 50 days. In, by 1997, Sabna Chicken had become the largest player in Tamil Nadu. It had 70 to 80 farmers on its calls and turnover was uh, 7 crore. In 2000, the brothers expanded across India, often working closely with the state governments. In 2008, the Sundaranjan started the Sabna holding expanding to sectors like uh, poultry in Bangladesh, Kenya, and the mining in Madagascar and animal health care in Sri Lanka. In 2010, the Saguna Group and World Revenue had touched to 3,000 crore rupees. So this is, uh, uh, Saguna is now a uh, um, name which every entrepreneur knows, particularly in the poultry sector. In goat sector, we have seen one uh, very uh, good entrepreneur, Mr. Vivek, the regent of Agra, was doing the parental business of truck transport, showed the keen interest in commercial boat farming, and uh, he took uh, training, 10 days training at Central Institute for Research on Goat, CIRG Magdum, and uh, uh, he made a model goat farms in three acres of land on scientific line by spending about 20 lakh of the construction of uh, shades, uh, Versailles store, grain storage, dipping tank, manure tank, area per water cultivation, etc. Later, he expanded his farm by keeping goats of other breeds also. Currently, he is selling 25 to 300 goats per year to different category of goat stakeholder. The sale price of one year aged female Barbary, Yamnapari, Jarkana, <coughs> Jakrana, Sirohi, Nakpani uh, Totapari is ranged from 6,500 to 10,500. The breeding buck uh, costs uh, rupees 8,000 to 20,000. And the castrated male, the Kasi, at 18 months from 10,000 to 30,000. The economic value of these goats is 32 lakh rupees. So this goat based every business is uh, well. Then the pig, in pig, when just we will discuss one success story uh, here from uh, Riksa Puller, he started work as a laborer at the age of 12, earning a few bucks a day. And today, at 51 years of age, his piggy business has touched to a uh, turnover of rupees 100, one crore per year. He started flying rickshaws and work hard to earn rupees 40. Per day, his wife, Puleswari Devi, began to sell the pork rice to assist the family income. She was earning around 8 to 10 per day. In 1982, he went to Dr. Sant Kumar Singh, uh, now the retired dean, come principal of Prachi Veterinary College, and uh, as a originator of our uh, breed, which has been developed here initially by the name TND, Tamworth, and this. And uh, now this is Jharsuk. This Jharsuk uh, has revolutionized the piggery sector in our uh, Jharkhand. So he took uh, this TND. Uh, before that, he took uh, training in uh, uh, here, which is throughout uh, training is imparted uh, throughout the year for 10 days training. So he took a training in piggery farming in 1982. And after that, he uh, took uh, four 
piglets, male piglets, uh, and female female piglets. Uh, one male and four female piglets started to farm initially on a very small scale, and in the next few years, his pig count rose to 45 with the annual turnover of his one lakh in 1990. The flesh of pig is huge demand of in uh, our state and also in neighboring states of Bihar and Assam. His business began to grow and in 1990 he purchased 10 kattas of land in village at price of 64,000 only. The pig count rose to over 100 and the business now had an annual turnover of 10 lakh. In the same year, he named his piggery Warsaw Pig Breeding Center. This traders from neighboring states began to approach him for the animals. And this uh, gentleman, this Mohar Sao, uh, he has been facilitated and given award by the former chief ministers of the Koda Arjun Munda in 2006 and 7. Now he has uh, uh, 350 animals and uh, annual turnover has uh, touched to 1 crore per uh, year. So now, just to conclude, I will discuss some important constraints in livestock entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, poor or absent infrastructure, and social barriers are there, lack of financial support, lack of training facilities, lack of support uh, services and extension staff, marketing constraints, uh, unsupportive legal and regulatory framework barriers to the entrepreneurship. So, strategies to overcome the constraints, establishing the basic infrastructure facilities for the livestock farm business at uh, village level, developing a positive view of entrepreneurship and livestock farming by the government, careful formulation of laws and regulations to ensure the easier development of small farm business, enhancing farmers' ability to finance through the banks. This is the very, very important thing which required to uh, remove the barriers. So providing farmers, the extension workers support to deal with the social barriers also. Developing effective institutions to provide the education and training at the right time, in the right place, and with the right balance of technical knowledge and practical skills. Extending the public sector to service the rural areas and ensure full range of information, advice, and support. Developing infrastructure and marketing facilities. Developing the efficient marketing information system and the marketing intelligence. So they are the some way to tackle the constraints. Now, just to conclude, uh, the, the majority of the livestock farm owners are small scale farmers. Livestock rearing mainly for own consumption and marketing, uh, marketing only when it is surplus. So, profitable livestock farming enterprise demands the shifting of livestock farmer to the livestock entrepreneurs. The farmers changing their attitude towards livestock entrepreneurship. So, developing livestock entrepreneurship is a challenging task and need of scientific training is there to inculcate competencies and entrepreneurship abilities. The government support for building livestock entrepreneurs is required through a number of programs and schemes. So we have a lot of programs, a lot of uh, emphasis is given on the development of entrepreneurship. And in recent years, uh, there is no uh, lack of fund. And uh, uh, when you have any idea, come with it, and you will definitely going to uh, pause. So this is all. This is all about the uh, lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, in case you have any question, please ask.
sir mostly thank yous are there hello sir mostly thank yous are there no questions okay. no questions are there okay thank you thank you very much sir on behalf of the organizing committee and on behalf of the participants sir we express our heartfelt gratitude for being with us thank you sir thank you thank you thank you everyone let's join tomorrow thank you bye